everyone, GoNodger here. Welcome back to Automation. So I've been uh, not able to do videos for a couple weeks now because of uh, trying to get over strep throat and tonsillitis and all sorts of things that made me unable to speak. But uh, in that time, I've come up with quite a few ideas I want to do here in Automation. Um, the first of which is related to one of the last videos I did on the Top Gear Challenge. Uh, I'm not going to go all thematic on this one and try and make it Top Gear themed and stuff like that. But I want to recreate a car that has been done on the Power Lap Time Board for the sake of trying to kind of feel out where we're, we're balanced. Because I did that video and tried to put my car up in the chart, but I don't really know how close the game is representing the quote-unquote Top Gear test track. So, what else is there to do but try and build one of the cars that they've done? And I was going through the list, that's not where I wanted to go, I was going through the list and kind of trying to find something that would be plausible, because there's a lot of cars that we just can't do yet, because you got the exotics and the V6 powered cars and the V12 power cars and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot that we can't build yet. Uh, but there's a lot that we can build, and the one that struck me first was the uh, B7 Audi RS4. And that struck me because we've got a sedan body. I have not really built that many sedans, especially performance ones, so there's something I haven't done. Uh, it's got a V8, a naturally aspirated V8 no less, uh, so those are always fun to build. And overall, it just seemed like something that was very doable with the uh, tools we have at our disposal as of now. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start by building a new platform. Now I'm gonna leave the current year as 2014. Uh, the B7 is a little bit older than that, but I want to have as much <laughs> as much technology readily available to me as possible because the, the R-series of Audi cars are extremely high-tech and we want to make it as close to that as possible. Uh, starting with the high-tech stuff, we've got the material. The chassis, if you will, is made out of aluminum. So I'm going to choose the glued aluminum body, or sorry, glued aluminum material for the chassis. It is a front longitudinal setup. Now on the front, I had to do a little research here. I was curious, I thought maybe it would be double wishbone, but it is actually a McPherson strut setup. Uh, and it, it, it works. You know, a lot of people kind of started knocking the McPherson strut, at least in the, the circles that I go in. Uh, the McPherson strut set up a few years ago, but it seems to, that seems to have gone away, and people still really rely on that setup. Uh, the rear, uh, rear suspension is a double wishbone. It's actually an unequal length double wishbone. That's something I, uh, I found during research, trying to get as much information on this car as possible. Good time to mention that this is all for fun. This is, there's no science involved in this. I'm sure I have probably gotten some statistics wrong in here, and I'm not trying to prove that the game is incorrect or correct or anything. It's all for fun. I just want to see how close I can get the time, or how close the time is to the real Top Gear time. And obviously we don't have the real Stig drive in the car, so who knows? Maybe the Stig really sucks. Maybe he's godlike and no game could ever represent him. Who knows? Alright, moving on. <laughs> the panel material, it's a mix. It's a mix of aluminum parts, uh, there's some steel parts to the body, there's polymer in the body. I think I'm just going to go with aluminum, just the kind of middle ground. If you look at the weight, it's average, so bam. It's average as we can get. Now on to the body shell. I'm not going to worry too much about getting it to look exactly like a, uh, a real RS4, but I'm going to get it as close as I can. Obviously this is probably the body I have to work with. I've got pictures open on my other monitor, so I'm going to leave the microphone, get to work, and try and just make it similar-ish. So I will rejoin you when I'm done with that.
Alrighty, so here we have it. Our marginally derpy Audi RS4 look-alike clone thing. Uh, like I said, not going to put a whole lot of time into this portion of it because that has nothing to do with the science. Um, that grill is actually marginally close. The headlights, not so much. The taillights, really not. Um, taillights are something we are desperately in need of more options. Uh, the taillight selection is quite limited. Uh, but that is for the future. I also gave it pretty big wheel arches that look a little ridiculous right now, but we've got some big wheels and tires to, to fit in there in the future. So let's do Audi uh, B7 RS4. Save that guy. And now... And now it is time to move on. Did I save that? Yeah. Move on to making it into a model. Um, that is not the one I wanted. I want this one. New model. And it is going to be longitudinal all-wheel drive, which is one of the the more awesome things about this car. Oh darn, I just realized something I forgot to put on there. Hold on. Back it up. Uh, can I still... Yes. Revise. It's going to make all the difference in the world. Not really, but it will actually make a difference in our test. Uh, put a front lip on. It will help that front end look a little better too. Uh, yeah, that actually makes a, a pretty big difference in looks, and it will help our aero situation in the future. Alright, so now let's make a new model. Longitudinal, all-wheel drive, choose an engine. Now we gotta build this guy. That is a 4.2 liter V8, um, all aluminum, super high-tech, dual overhead cam. It's, it's a pretty badass engine, if you ask me. Uh, I've always been a fan of it. More recently because of my brother, because he he was really big into them and just recently purchased an S5. And uh, I can't wait to get a hold of that thing and it just just listening to YouTube videos of them, they sound awesome. That's basically my whole fascination with them. But let's get to building. And I've got it on bore stroke, bore stroke on inches at the moment, so I might have to do a little conversion real quick. Uh, let's see. Alrighty, I got that changed over to metric system, the correct system, and let's see, I need 84 and a half, 84 and a half, by 92.7, very specific. Uh, so it's actually a rather long stroked engine, yep, 92.7, and uh, that gives us... 4,159cc, which Audi calls 4.2 liters, close enough. Now in the crank, con rods, and pistons, I'm going to go with forged steel on the crank. It's the only part I don't really know anything about. The connecting rods I know are forged. Uh, if they are forged H-beam or I-beam steel, eh, I don't really know. Um, so if need be, and I believe need will be, I will bump this up. And I know the pistons are forged as well. I'm gonna go go ahead and bump the quality on the bottom end stuff up to 10. There's a reason for that, we will get to. Uh, not direct hacking OHC, but dual overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. On the RS variant of this engine, known as the FSI, I believe is what they call it. But anyway, uh, the regular one has five valves per cylinder, and like the S4 and the uh, the regular S5, but the RS variants have four valves per cylinder, and that has to do with the rev limit, I presume. I don't really know, <laughs> but I assume that they they reworked the heads and it worked out better as a four valve setup. Uh, compression ratio 12.5 to 1. I haven't done this in a while. I haven't done any recreations uh, basically since the engine designer came out, or not the engine designer, the car studio came out. So I'm not, not used to this anymore. Uh, ooh, I just, just thought of something that I haven't looked up, 
and that is what kind of variable valve timing it has. So let me look that up. Alrighty, I am back and have found the information I need. Uh, I'm going to do a cam profile of 60 and VVT on all cams. That is only on the RS variants. Uh, I don't believe the regular 4.2s have VVT. No VVL. Um, style. I don't think it's going to matter. We'll, we'll never see it and you won't see it pretty much in, uh, in the engine bays of the cars. Now, I, I did notice that they don't plastic clad it as much as some manufacturers do nowadays, uh, but still not not too much of a visual on the engine. Uh, aspiration, as I mentioned, naturally aspirated. Uh, I'm gonna bump this quality up to up to five as well. It is a darn Audi after all. And moving on to the fuel system, injection, direct injection. And it is a twin intake system, which is pretty cool looking. Uh, we'll go with performance intakes on there, and that actually looks pretty similar. It would it would be faced this way. Um, the uh, the intakes are on the back and run up. It's pretty cool looking. Uh, so that is that. Uh, we'll also do the quality up to five here, and it runs on 93 octane. Uh, that is AKI. And fuel richness, we got that direct injection, so we can go up to maybe a 12.7. I'm going to advance the timing quite a lot. RPM limit, this is where that bottom end comes into play. This is where a lot of the awesomeness of this engine comes into play. It, it revs up to 8,000 is your red line. Uh, the rev limit is 82.50, so I'm going to leave it at 82 because uh, given the game and what it's uh, what it's shown me in the past, it's probably going to want to come apart, so let's not push our luck. Uh, the exhaust is kind of a long tube setup. It says it has uh, steel tubular exhaust. Well, I'm going to say that's long tubular. Uh, I don't think it probably looks anything like that. It probably looks something like that. On to a dual exhaust, and we're shooting for, uh, let me bring up my notes real quick, we're shooting for the 400 horsepower range, so if each pipe is 219 horsepower friendly, then I think we're okay. We'll do high flow cats, and let's see, I want to say the stock, stock ones have those exhaust cutouts, uh, so we'll do... And we'll do some straight throughs and then secondary straight throughs with uh, bypass valves on all of them. So it'll be really quiet at idle, but then once you unleash it, it gets really loud. I believe that is how they are set up. I'm not 100% sure. But now on to the fun stuff. Let's first test it out. This is a recommendation somebody left a comment on that I should probably be using this testing screen more often. Uh, to see what's going going on in the engine, see what's failing, see where the problems are before starting to fine tune it, basically. So there we have it. Nice, nice quiet idle. No, nothing really to see here. Uh, let's see how it's performing. So, <laughs> see, that is very helpful actually. The whole time. The uh, connecting rods are flashing at me here saying, whoa, buddy, this is not good. And then once we rev up, it's not failing, but I'm losing oil pressure, and the pistons are getting iffy, and the connecting rods are saying, holy cow, guy, we want to escape. So it probably wouldn't fail on the test, but it would come pretty darn close. So I'm going to go ahead and bump up to I-beam steel, and we'll do the same thing. Straight on up, and now it's only going yellow. I'm okay with that because at the 8,000 RPM red line, then things are pretty much okay. Uh, looking at this, I think my numbers are going to be pretty close. Uh, test mode, you're looking for 414 horsepower at 7,800 RPM, 317 foot-pounds of torque at 5,500 RPM. So a very very Honda-esque uh, V8 we have here. Lots of horsepower, high RPM, 
and significantly less torque. So let's see how close we are. Oh, a little bit of sound clipping there at the rev limiter. <laughs> um, fairly close, but actually a little, a little too high. We've gone, we've gone and made this engine too powerful. What a shame. Uh, let's see. Maybe we'll tone down that cam a little bit. And let me think of anything else I can do. Probably bring some timing down and lean it out some to make it more efficient so that we're not wasting fuel, because I am wasting fuel right now. So a few quick tests here. Uh, I am having MTBF issues. I'm getting a fairly decent MTBF. So, uh, I'm not sure what to do about that. But now we're down to 408 and 342 foot-pounds, so the torque's, the torque's probably going to be high. Uh, I don't know if we're really going to get away from that. Uh, required cooling isn't too bad, so I'm going to need to put a little bit more cam back into it. And I can actually lean this thing out even further. And now we're getting up to 90, so it's starting to come up. But now we're, we're helping the emissions in the economy a ton. Up to 413 horsepower. Lean it out even more. Alright, 414 horsepower. 8,000 RPM, so a little bit higher, but with that really good curve here, it doesn't doesn't really matter. Uh, 335 foot-pounds of torque, so we're only only slightly high in that regard. Uh, bottom end, even if I increase this up to 15, I bet it's still gonna have issues. Uh, yep, but 72,000 kilometers. Yeah, the only thing I can do is go up to titanium on this. And that doesn't help at all, so that's not. It is the pistons that are that are having the issues, and uh, I don't think the light gate forge is going to help. Oh, it did. Well, how about that? Didn't really help the MTBF that much, but as long as it helped get rid of the message, I am happy. So now to save it, 4.2 liter FSI. Save. Now we go back. We choose that engine, choose, and manual gearbox with a standard clutch because you can actually get this car with a regular six-speed instead of the floppy paddles, which is pretty cool that they still do that. Uh, Spacing-wise, I don't really know. <laughs> I'll say, we'll say just leave it in the middle for now. Uh, top speed, it's estimating 202 miles an hour. That's a a dramatic overestimation. <laughs> uh, it's going to have a little bit of an aero drag situation going on, so so we won't be using all of that for sure. Uh, differentials, unfortunately, this is one thing we are definitely lacking. So if we are slower than the real time, this is one of those things that we could uh, definitely put into a factor. Wheels, I said that it has really wide wheels or tires they are 19 by 9s to me that is a gigantic wheel but I don't drive new cars so uh, I guess I'm just not familiar with that we go with the sports compound road we'll go for a high quality setting on all of these tire width is 220 or sorry 255 all the way around and as I suspected I can't quite get there I can get there on the back but not the front I mm, think I'm just going to go with for the 245s all the way around. And let's see if these will go up to 19 or not. No. Let's see. Any chance? Not a chance. Not a chance, it says. <laughs> uh, those are pretty close, though. 18s and 245. Uh, rim offset, I believe that update is coming soon. I saw that in the update in one of uh, Rob's little dev updates. Brakes, a lot of them. Very red pad types, <laughs> as Doge would say. Very red. Uh, large disc brakes, 
solid. We'll sink two pistons in the back with again very aggressive pads, and very large rotors. So much brake, very stop. Aerodynamics, under tray. Don't really know. I'm gonna say it's at least semi-clad. I'm sure they have put some cladding under there to make it more aerodynamic. Cooling airflow, we need 358, we have 593, thanks to Audi's gigantic front grills. Um, so I can take this down, give it some brake airflow, and take this down to uh, somewhere around there. Uh, so that air brake airflow should help keep them cool. Front arrow, rear arrow, we don't have the ability to adjust. But we're going to give it some front downforce. This car is going to be naturally understeery, so front downforce isn't going to hurt. I'm going to give it a good bit of it as well. Alright, interior, five seats. Uh, hmm, I'm going to say luxury. Uh, it's probably lightweight materials, but... But it's not a Saturn, you know, they, they really put a lot of work into their interiors to make them fit and finish, so we'll say luxury. And we do have a weight to achieve here, so I gotta, I gotta play that into account and adjust things as we go to try and get that weight as well. I'd say quite a bit of sound insulation, standard entertainment, power steering, ABS, traction control. I want to say it has electricity electronic stability as well. No launch control though. Safety premium. Germans take their safety very seriously. Uh, suspension. We can't adjust this stuff just yet. Camber. I'll give it, oops, wrong way. Give it some camber front and back. I need to really sit down and do some good research and testing to try and figure out these suspension settings better. But in the next update, we're getting this menu right here, which will give you some presets like, you know, comfort, sport, race, etc., uh, which will help people like me and probably a bunch of you as well kind of understand these settings better. But for now, take a swing at it. Uh, give it some stiffness. Not a whole lot. It's still a pretty comfortable driving car from what I have read. And I'll adjust this if needed. Uh, we'll leave the height not bottomed out. It doesn't it doesn't ride super low, but it's not it's not a monster truck either. Okay, so that is a wrap. Let me look at some things here. Weight, we are way under. Um, showing the curb weight at 36.38 pounds, and we're showing 33.46. So let's go back to the interior. Bonk, bunch of insulation. Uh, we'll put luxury entertainment in there. We'll do advanced safety. Uh, let's see what that gets us to. 35.68. Much better. Much better. Um, wonder what handcrafted does. 30. Oh, too far. Too far. But it's easier to go back down. So back to the interior. We'll take some sound delay insulation out. 37.16. This is kind of a backwards way of doing things, but uh, we're not building it for the stats necessarily. Uh, 3707, I'm going to be okay with that because I've read anywhere from 3638 all the way up to 3750, so we're kind of in the middle. Uh, weight distribution, pretty good. It's actually got a little bit of rear weight to it, but almost 50-50. Top speed 190, that seems a little high to me. Uh, I could definitely... I would definitely say it's lower than that. Uh, acceleration, 4 seconds to 60. Quarter mile and 12.2. Uh, braking, cornering, 1.13. That's pretty good. 24 miles per gallon. That's that's surprising. Uh, not making any downforce, really. Alright, so now for the, the whole point of this little adventure I'm going down here is to see what its power lap time at the airfield track would be. Now I looked up the power lap times and it was a 125.7. So let's see what our virtual Audi B7 RS4 will do. Alright, 
so it sounds sounds pretty good heading, heading down into Winkle all the way up to almost 200 kilometers an hour staying using all of that RPM band here it doesn't have a whole lot of low-end grunt but once it gets up to that six grand mark it's really really pulling like crazy everything I've seen this is a very forgiving car to drive it's uh, it's fun in that you can kind of sling it around but it doesn't it doesn't take you by surprise all right, down into probably the slowest part of the track here all the way down to like 50 60 kilometers an hour and using all that power to get back out of here you can see that the uh, acceleration G's are working now longitudinal and lateral this is the first time I've done a video in the official release with the chest tracks nice and flat through there Pretty hard braking using all of those gigantic brake discs and cross the line with a 85.76 alright so that uh, that completely takes me by surprise uh, uh, if you don't want to do the math in your head, that is a 1 minute, 25 second, 0.76 lap time. And uh, if you remember, the power lap time for this car by the Stig was a 1 minute, 25 second, 0.7 lap. So apparently it is true, the Stig is driving the car in automation. And I think that about sums it up, so I don't need to go and modify it at all. It's exactly right. Uh, pretty sure a lot of that is really really luck based but that's really cool that it that it ended up being the exact right time first try uh, and it's very um it's very inspiring that uh the game may actually be right not to say that i didn't think it would be but it's a big undertaking to try and get all the physics and stuff to be real world correct so big kudos to all the automation developers i am extremely impressed right now <laughs> uh and I'm so impressed, I think I'm going to do another episode where I do the same thing, maybe in a shorter format. Maybe I'll just, like, tack it on to the next episode, because I got some other stuff I want to do as well. Uh, just to see if we can get a larger test sample to see if if they're all going to end up the same. So, really cool. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.